Raid Shadow Legends Champion. Guys, this time on one of my favorite rare champions in the game. I've been ranting and raving about how much I love this rare for a long time now on my main channel, Ash Raid Shadow Legends, that I thought I should do a guide on him. And boy, is he good. Who are we talking about today, guys? It's a Skinwalker rare champion, Narahorn, who is in my opinion, the best control champion out of any rare in the entire game and better than a lot of epics out there. You could argue most epics out there. That's how much I love this guy. So he is a spirit affinity skinwalker rare champion, as you guys can see on his A1 ability Ram. Uh, and you can see he's got the uh, he's got the equipment to, to pull off the Ram, right? Uh, damage increases according to how much HP this champion has lost. This attack cannot be strong critical, or a weak hit. It's based on attack, but it does not matter. The last thing that you want this champion is crit rate. You do not care about crit rate. You don't care about crit damage. You also don't care about attack percentage, really, because this ability is really doing no damage, and it can't be critical anyway. This is his only damage-dealing ability inside his entire kit, so it would behoove you guys to focus on control and sustainability, uh, durability on this champion. On the A2, War Drum. Places on a three-turn cooldown win book, definitely worth booking this champion. Place a provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn. Place a 30% increased defense on this champion for two turns. Now, because this is not, uh, you know, based on a critical hit or based on any hit at all, we're placing this debuff. It all, you, all it requires is accuracy, right? So we do not need, again, that critical hit to place this provoke on all enemies on a three turn cooldown that's really really rare and valuable especially out of a rare champion but what makes his kit even better is his determined a3 ability on a three turn cooldown unkillable buff on this champion for two turns two more books and they go right to cooldown this is how skill tomes should be ladies and gentlemen so three turn cooldown he's going to be unkillable two out of every three turns he's got the aoe provoke he's got increased defense on himself and then he has well ram uh but he also has one of the better auras out there for dungeons increase allied defense in dungeons by 30 percent uh, excuse me 27 percent. i can't read uh but 27 is close to 30 damn it uh honestly guys this aura is incredibly good especially for the early game in the mid game you can use him as a control champion in any dungeon in the game, especially get through those difficult waves in Doom Tower as you progress. He is a great wave specialist, a great control champion, not only again provoking everybody, but also keeping himself alive and, well, unkillable in the process, okay? He's fairly easy to build as well. Again, we don't need any damage out of this champion, and that provoke is all but guaranteed, again, predicating that we have enough accuracy on Narahorn. You can see why I love this dude so much. Before we take a look at his build here, I want to show you, I don't have him ascended, unfortunately, but if I did, I would go with Dark Resolve. Not only do you get a chance at blocking any freeze, provoke, and true fear, and we don't want our control champion to be CC, right? So I think that Dark Resolve is a great option, but you also get some nice stats, extra HP, resistance, and speed, depending on the ascension level. So I would go again with Dark Resolve on this champion. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and go with Masteries. What I did was, I reset the Masteries, to kind of pick them out with you guys. Hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, if you don't, feel free to fast forward. Uh, so a lot of people would say go offense and support on this champion. I don't really agree, but I guess it de does depend on where you're using him. He's a beast against the Magma Dragon because of that provoke and the unkillable. So against Magma Dragon, if you're just looking for a little bit extra damage and that's how you're mainly using Narlhorn, I think it's nothing wrong with going down offense. I would probably just come with crit. Uh, well, crit rate doesn't matter. So I guess I go attack, crit damage, come down the left-hand side. You know what? Let's give a shout out to uh, Hell. Hades. We have been spotlighting his uh, his channel. This is what he has for masteries. Again, crit rate's not going to matter because he's not going to be able to get any critical hits because of that A1, but I'll show you nonetheless. They recommend coming down the offensive tree uh, and going with War Master. Support tree as well. If you notice here, Master Hexer and Sniper aren't going to do anything for Narahorn, right? Because think about it. On his A2, we get Provoke. It's 100% already, so 
that doesn't matter in terms of sniper and master hexer is not it's not going to apply to provoke so neither of those blessings are going to help him at all so what i prefer is this right i want to go still with the accuracy i still want to go support so i'm going to pick up charge focus pinpoint accuracy and swarm smiter i'm still going to pick up eagle eye i love that control on the first hit i'm going to pick up lord of steel because i have some basic sets on him i'm going to go down and pick up uh I'm going to go down and pick up, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to go defense. I'm going to go with extra defense on the defense tree here. This is for more like of a control build, right? Uh, versus getting that little bit of extra damage from War Master. Because really, when you think about it, we're coming down this offensive tree only for War Master. So we're wasting a lot of masteries along the way, you know, for the most part. Maybe a tiny bit of extra damage. Uh, I'm going to pick up Resurgent. I'm going to pick up, in case you missed it, Blast Proof, mitigating damage from AoE attacks. He will be taking a, a decent amount of damage because that unkillable is not blocked damage. It's unkillable. So, you know, going to keep that in mind. I'm going to go with Delay Death. Uh, going with Retribution uh, and or Deterrence doesn't make a big difference because, again, that's a very weak uh, A1 ability. So I'm going to go with Cycle of Revenge instead. And what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm actually going to go ahead and pick up a, a, a you know, a useless mastery in Master Hexer just to come down and pick up Eagle Eye for that extra accuracy instead because landing that Provoke on the A2 is paramount to getting full value out of this champion. I'll also go with Spirit Haste on this champion and then we'll just fill things in. I like Shadow Heal and I like, uh, nope, I like Shadow Heal and I like, where is it, man? Where is it? Okay, Exalt and Death. Basically, healing this champion every time an enemy is killed, or the first time an enemy is killed each round, and Shadow Heal, healing this champion every time an enemy is healed. Both of these I love putting on Provokers, right? Because they're going to be taking a lot of damage, so extra heals just off Masteries is fantastic. So those are the Masteries that I've gone with, guys. Those are my personal favorites. Of course, we could also, you can make an argument, we come down here and go for Lasting Gifts and increase the duration of the uh, the increased defense on himself but i think this build is just fine in terms of mastery these are my preferences uh in terms of the total stats you guys can see here we want a decent amount of hp and defense on this champion obviously and then as fast as we can get him so i would say defense percentage hp percentage speed and accuracy are our priorities, right? In no particular order. First and foremost, I guess, is accuracy because he needs to land those provokes. Depending on where you're going, 374 is, is a great accuracy. 350, I found, is enough to land the provokes against any level of Doom Tower, even hard, okay? And against the Magma Dragon. So we're good there at 374, and I'm really happy with this build. Uh, I got lucky on the Ascension on the boots, by the way. I got speed with more speed there. Uh, we have defense percentage on the chest. We have HP percentage on the gauntlets. I think a mix and match of HP percentage and defense percentage is just fine on the chest and the gauntlets. And basically the same thing here from the ring HP, from the amulet defense, and from the banner. I have HP, but nothing wrong with going accuracy as, as well there especially if you don't have a super developed great haul on spirit affinity under the accuracy category so there it is guys a fairly basic build again accuracy enough defense to stay alive enough HP to stay alive, and then just rack up some as much speed as you possibly can on this champion. Guys, before I let you go, I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to keep you for the entire battle, but I will show you uh, the beginning and the end of, you know, just one random room where I use this dude. Here it is, Secret Room 7. This is rare HP champions only. There's not that many out there, right? So uh, slim pickings, but hey, Gnarlhorn is one. And his job on this team is not going to show on the stat sheet, but his job on this team is to basically just control the enemy team, stay alive with his unkillable, and he does a great job at that. And hey, in about an hour and a half, we will beat. There he goes with the provokes, lands on all five enemies, nice and easy there. You can see their force affinity too, force affinity and void, so fantastic for us we're gonna get a lot of weak hits coming in and that's it i mean slowly but surely the rest of the team here will pick apart very slowly on these mobs that have you know 200 level 280 they have a ton of defense and a ton of hp and there's not many good hp based damage dealers in rares so slim pickings as i mentioned so again his job here basically you can see he has unkillable right now 
So, I mean, obviously his health is looking pretty good. But even when they start healing, uh, yeah, they have a healer on their team in Gear Grinder. Keep in mind that Shadow Heal is going to keep healing him up as well. He's landing more Provokes. And the, the idea here is, is we don't have a... Actually, we do have a Reviver. I was going to say we don't have a Reviver. But it's really easy to keep this dude alive with that Unkillable. As long as you have those Masteries. Again, I can't stress enough. Shadow Heal and what was it? Exalt and Death? I think uh, those healing masteries are great, right? Especially when you obviously have a healer on the enemy team. So guys, I'll come back at you when this one is over. Provokes on provokes on provokes. We're looking pretty good here, guys. Uh, be right back in like, I don't know, 10 minutes, hopefully. All right, guys, here we go. 23 minutes later, no big deal. He didn't go down once the entire fight. He got, got kind of close, maybe one-third health, but again, we do have a reviver on the squad. He was able to stay healthy, and here in 24 minutes flat, we get a new best time, ladies and gentlemen. 598 turns. We got the job done. And again, he doesn't jump out at you on, on the stat sheet. Actually, Corporal and Cadaver jumps out at you in the stat sheet. And Painkeeper for being the damage leader there, right? And the healing leader, Painkeeper, OP. Uh, but yeah, Narhorn, it's not going to come up necessarily on the stat sheet, but boy, oh boy, in terms of control damage mitigation with that, uh, with the, with the control plus his unkillable, he is the best out of all the rares, in my opinion. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Go ahead and subscribe. Our goal here on the channel is to review every single champion in Raid Shadow Legends. We got a long road ahead of us, and I invite you to join me on this journey. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys.